it's important to know the provenance of this item in a couple of ways. One is, where did it come from? How did we get our hands on it? How did it come into the possession of the modern world? And number two, how can you verify that what you see in the video or online is a true copy of the picture that's actually carved in the artifact? We'll talk about both. A team of German archaeologists recovered it in Iraq quite some time ago. The antiquities-rich archaeological sites along the courses of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers became well known to the academic world as long ago as the mid-1800s. German archaeologists got to work there as early as 1845, digging into the rich deposits of history at the ruins of Babylon. And in the early 20th century, they worked farther south, excavating classic Sumerian sites, such as the city of Uruk. So the German team took this small but extraordinarily curious artifact with its eye-catching solar system image to Berlin. It was added to the collection of the museum that I can only pronounce as the Vorder Asiatisch or Near East Museum, which is part of the beautiful Pergamon Museum complex. It is item VA. 243. Now let's talk about how you can double check this if you wish and compare what you see here with other photographs of the same artifact. And I also want to give you a quick heads up about what you'll see elsewhere on the internet about this item. Okay, so first of all, the good news is it's easy to find good solid verification of this image. That's because the world has been looking at photographs of this artifact for more than 70 years now. To the best of my knowledge, the first time it was published was in 1939 in a book aptly titled Cylinder Seals by Henry Frankfurt. Frankfurt was a consummate and well-recognized archaeologist who cut his teeth in the field in the early part of the 20th century and then went on later in his career to become a professor of great esteem and great status. The following year, 1940, the German Museum itself went on to publish a photograph of this artifact. The book itself was put together under the auspices of Anton Mortgat, and I think we can add his authority to that of Henry Frankfurt, and I think it's important that Anton Mortgat was there to vet the authenticity of the photograph of this particular cylinder seal. The issue of the extreme chronological anomaly that the solar system image presents us with and the uncanny possibility that it might represent an extraterrestrial contact event in mankind's distant past was first brought to the attention of the public at large way back in the 1960s in a book by Yosef Shukovsky of the old Soviet Academy of Sciences. That book was translated into English and augmented with comments by none other than Carl Sagan. In Intelligent Life in the Universe, one or both of the authors states that while they're not saying that the cylinder seal makes a prima facie case for alien contact, it does constitute the kind of evidence that ought to be further investigated. Intelligent life in the universe attracted a lot of attention, but starting in the mid-1970s, several authors came to write about this particular cylinder seal, and they attach nonsensical theories of their own to it. It's theories that have nothing to do with the facts that we see here on this artifact. That's the kind of thing you're going to see all over the internet. It's proven to be very popular. I take a different approach. I take an approach of critical rationalism. I'm only interested in a scientific analysis of the facts that we can see here. There's an old adage, fact is stranger than fiction. And I think in the case of extraterrestrial contact, that's especially true. I strive for accuracy, not just with this cylinder seal, but with all of the artifacts. I've traveled internationally to gather information. For example, the University of Pennsylvania was very active in Sumerian archaeology and funded and fielded a couple, a couple of expeditions at an early date. They have a tremendous museum and resource collection on the Sumerians. So I actually moved to Philadelphia. I took residence there for six months, just so that every spare moment I had, I could spend time in the University Museum or in and among the tremendous collection of other material and resources that's available there. And in Chicago, the Oriental Institute also has a legacy of field expeditions to the Tigris-Euphrates area, and they have a great collection of artifacts. So a time came when I moved also to Chicago. A great number of these artifacts have found their way into North American collections, even where I am now, which is British Columbia, Canada. 
at least one of the universities has several artifacts. In fact, I will present a picture of one in a later section. But I'd like to make the point that there is a tremendous amount of nonsense out there on the internet, and that what you'll get from me will be without any auxiliary theories. I just want to talk about the facts that we can find on the ancient Sumerian relics themselves. It is my absolutely heartfelt goal to give you only accurate information in this regard.